Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, we've been working on getting our Kearney Trekker 3H milling machine set up to cut helical gears. Uh, we've got a lead attachment here that will actually rotate that gear blank as it's being cut, as the table's feeding in, in order to give that helical or spiral gear. Uh, this is the way that it used to be done back in the days of manual machining. Uh, before the computers took over, it was done through gear trains and stuff. Uh, already previously, we've got our, what's called our lead attachment set up to the machine. This is going to adjust how much that gear blank turns as it's being fed. Uh, but we've still got to get everything else hooked up. We've got to get this connected to the dividing head. We got to get uh, the machine set up to do everything else. So we're going to be working on that in this episode. So we're going to pick up, pick up where we left off in the last video after we got the lead attachment attached to the machine. So now that we've got the lead attachment mounted to the machine, we have it set up with the proper gear ratios to give us the lead that we want on the dividing head. The next step is to connect the two. There's a drive shaft that goes between this and the dividing head, which will actually turn uh, the gear blank as it's being cut. So what I have here, this is a uh, uh, Kearney Trekker Model H dividing head, and it is designed to use with this particular lead attachment. And you know, like any dividing head, whenever you uh, come in here, you can do your division so many turns or you know per time depending on the number of gear that you're or number of teeth that you're cutting but in addition to that if you loosen up this uh dial here and you turn the crank on the back here notice that it's actually turning the whole index face and if you notice it's turning the chuck with that so what's going to happen is is as this piece is cutting in the in the, you, you set it to the tooth that you want to cut, and then as, as it's cutting, it's just going to actually be rotating the chuck in time with the table movement so that you get that helical cut going on. So that's the, the game plan here. But we've got to actually set this physical connection up between the two through this uh, drive shaft. That's just a little handle that goes on it. And to do that, I've got a drive shaft here that we can use to connect it. I'm gonna to have to move my dividing head a little bit to get it where it needs to be to use this particular drive shaft. It's a little bit longer than what it needs to be, but it'll work. So let me loosen up the dividing head. I gotta move it forward and we'll get that installed. All right, that should yep, allow us to move that up. And what I have here are some couplings that will go in here a little bit more. We'll put that in. Tell you what, let me put this one on this end. Put that in. And then we're going to pull the dividing head back up. And this coupler will connect the two. There we go. All right, that should have those connected and we'll tighten our dividing head back down here so this will be kind of the first time i've seen all this stuff working together we've got everything connected i'm going to uh, turn my feed on when i do i'm actually going to be feeding the table away here because I need to position it that way. But as the table, that screw on the table is turning, it's gonna go into the gearbox down here, go through all the proper ratios to give me the proper speed coming out of this drive shaft that's connected to the dividing head, which is going to cause, basically you'll see this handle spinning as well as the chuck spinning. Now you gotta remember, as, the ta as this spins, it's just rotating that chuck when you go back to the beginning, it's going to be in the same place. And you come in here, you do your index. These are, it's kind of two separate things that are going on here. So you set your gear spacing, you're going to get that lead on that cut. And then when you come back out, you'll index it and you'll get that same lead on your cut again. Let's uh, watch it all happen here. I'm just going to feed in. Again, you see the shaft is turning. This dial is turning. 
and the chuck is turning. So everything appears to be working like it should, in theory, assuming I got everything set up. Now we're not done with our setup here. I've still got to get my table angle set and as well as make sure I've got the direction of my lead cutting in the right direction. I'm not sure if this is um, a left or right right now. I have to get all that figured out, but uh, we'll get that worked out here in a minute. But I did want to kind of see, let you guys see all this happening at one time. So the next thing we got to look at is the uh, lead angle. And like I said, I've already determined that this is a 45 degree angle on this particular gear. Now to cut this, obviously if we come in here straight, it's just going to cut straight across. We need for the gear to actually be turned to 45 degrees. And then as it's coming through that cut, you're, you're going to get a little bit of a rotation to kind of match so you keep the center of the gear into the center of that cut, depending on where it's at. So it's going to be rotating just a little bit uh, through that cut each time. So we need to actually rotate this around. There's two ways you can do it. Uh, the first one is, is you actually rotate the table to your lead angle. Um, and if you have a universal mill, which this is a universal mill, that is an option. You can rotate the table. Um, if you have a plane mill, however, the plane mills do not give you that option to rotate the table. Uh, in that case, you have to put a universal head on here and actually turn your cutter so that your cutter is cutting at 45 degrees rather than at 90 degrees as it is now. So I'm going to see if we can get 45 degrees on this. I have heard some people say that doing a 45 is not always possible. I'm going to check that out. We'll see if we can get by with it. If not, we'll have to get the universal head on here and go at it that way. I'm hoping that we can use the uh, universal table function to do this. So let's uh, move our table around. I'm looking here on the front of my uh, table and there's a mark. Right now the table is set on zero and it is set exactly on that zero. I know this table is square. I just wanted to check and see where it's going. I have never moved this table before off of zero, so uh, I just wanted to get an idea of where I needed to come back to when the time comes. Got you zoomed out a little bit where you can see what's going on a little bit better. I don't know if you can hear it in the video, but it has come a rain shower out here, and we're getting to some rain right now. Something that we are in bad need of. All right, I'm gonna, there's a couple of bolts on the side that lock this table in place and I need to loosen these up. And it doesn't look like they've been loosened up in a long time. There's two on this side, and it looks like there's two on the other side as well. These uh, bolts still have paint on them. I think this mill's been repainted a couple of times, so probably hasn't been moved since at least the last time it was painted. I'll get all those loosened up, and we'll see if we can get it to spin around. I have loosened up all of those uh, four bolts. That I'm pretty sure is what's tightening all this up. And I'm, if I am correct, when I turn this on the front, it's going to be geared in there and actually turn the uh, table. Boy, is it tight. Well, maybe it's just going to loosen it. I would have thought that that would have been on a worm gear or something to rotate it around. Let me see if there's another one on the back. There is not. <clears throat> I 
I guess if all else fails, go read the manual. Let me go uh, make sure I'm doing this right. So I think I got this figured out. I went and looked in the manual and actually I couldn't find anything on this in the manual, but I did came out here and did some playing. And I think here's the key. You got to unscrew this uh, on the front. And when you do, you got a nice tapered pin that goes up into the spindle. And what I really like about this is, is that this is designed so that when you put install this, it's going to zero out that table. It's going to make sure that it is locked in dead square. So you're not just having to read the, 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 the gauge here, the dial here to get it lined up perfectly square, because as this taper goes in, it's going to just align everything up nice and perfect. Nice feature. I really honestly didn't realize that was there, uh, but I was honestly concerned with pulling, moving this table because I knew I was going to have to reset it. But this makes that process much, much easier. And with that out, I can now come in here and just kind of manhandle this and move it around. So we're at about 25 degrees right now. And uh, what I'm gonna need to do is actually pull this table forward a bit uh, to be able to get enough of an angle on there. This is one of the things that I was told by someone that when you turn this table around, you have to have the arbor out so far, you have to have a long enough arbor to be able to do this. And I'm going to have to see whether we can pull it all off um, with the arbors that we have, but hopefully we'll be able to. And again, I'm going for 45 degrees and we're at about 40 right there, a little over 40. Forty-three and a half. You've got about a half a degree to go. Just a touch more. Went just a touch too far. That is pretty darn close. All right. And now what I need to do is come back in here and tighten these uh, up on the side and that should lock the table back down in place. Well guys, just kind of taking a look at things. Everything seems to be kind of uh, working in principle. I um, have got honestly some things I need to kind of mess around with, play around with. I need to get an arbor set up. I need to get a uh, piece set up in here and start just trying to make some test cuts. Um, and I think what I'm going to do is kind of cut this video off on just the setup part of this. Um, I think also what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn a test blank, probably out of some plastic material, and I'm going to do some test cuts and just kind of play around with this whole setup because I've never done this before and I don't want to screw anything up. And I've got some things I've honestly got to play around with just to make sure things that are working right. Uh, first off, I need to make sure that I have my lead set up properly where it's going to make that cut. I don't know. It looks to me like the chuck is spinning too fast for the table movement. I may not, it may not be, uh, but you know, until I can kind of get a piece in there and kind of really do some playing with things. I, I just don't know for sure. Um, I've also need to uh, just make sure that I've got the, the direction that the chuck is turning set right. There is a reversing lever on this so I can make the uh, direction of the rotation of the chuck uh, go either 
forward or reverse with the, the direction of the table. So that's an easy adjustment over here on the, on the uh, lead attachment. Um, like I said, I just got some things I need to kind of play around with and check out before we actually start making any cuts. But I think that we more or less have the lead attachment set up. This is really, I did set it up one time previously, just kind of playing around with it, but not rotating the table and things like that. This is really the first time I've truly had this thing set up. So uh, first time I've really kind of seen it in action. Uh, you know, if you don't remember, I acquired this, I found this lead attachment for this machine uh, some time back. And um, when I found the box, the box didn't have any of the gearing in it at all. I went ahead and bought it. I, it was a pretty decent deal. Uh, and then I got really lucky. A viewer actually found the gears, all the gears, in a machinery dealer out on the West Coast. And uh, I was able to buy all the gears. They didn't have the lead attachment, but they had all the gears. So I was able to purchase those. Uh, so I basically was able to cobble together. I actually had to make a part for this. There's a video out there uh, when I did that and kind of cobble this lead attachment together to make it work on this machine. But, uh, you know, we, we got all that done and um, now it's going to be the first time that I've actually I'm going to be able to use this on a real job. And I'm excited about it. Uh, so it's a learning curve for me. Like I said, I've never cut spiral gears or helical gears before. So uh, this is going to be a fun uh, journey. So come back with me. We'll be doing more on this project as uh, time goes on. Uh, we need to get this gear knocked out. So hopefully this is going to get done sooner than later. Uh, but I've still got some more things we need to get going before we actually start making cuts. Guys, with that, that is going to be a wrap. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up, comments, greatly appreciated. Hit that bell icon up there to get notifications when new videos are posted. And as always, a huge big thank you to all the uh, people who support the site through Patreon, PayPal, etc. Uh, really couldn't do all the cool things we do in here without some of you guys' help. So with that, we're going to sign off, and we will catch you on the next video. Again, thanks for watching.